Hello and welcome to the show. I am here at the top of Mount Chiliad for some more downhill chaos. Our first vehicle today is the 2004 Ferrari Formula One car. Been a little while since we've had a Formula One car tackle the course and certainly I was expecting this to be a mighty quick vehicle. Now, the hikers were being a pain, so <laughs> I decided I was waiting. I gave them a chance to get out of the way. They weren't, so I got fed up of waiting. So we may have slightly uh, mowed one, <laughs> one of them down. If you're going to stand in front of a car ready to launch, then you, that you, should, you should expect that. Now, this Ferrari is absurdly fast, accelerating so fast, in fact, it often gets itself into a bit of trouble. In fact, quite a spectacular bit of trouble. That was actually the Cougar that caused the issue there. I kind of ramped uh, off the little bump, flipped off the top of the Cougar, and that pretty much ruined the Ferrari. It was actually smoking from <laughs> that uh, particular crash. As you can imagine, Formula One cars not exactly designed to be dealing with bumps, and they were a bit of an issue. You could get the car stopped very well when it tumbled off the mountain because the brakes are phenomenal, but bumps could cause uh, the car to spin. Also hitting hikers and general wildlife around. Not a good idea. The car is so brutally fast and so light. You hit them and it's going to get flung off into all sorts of scenery, even when you're not having issues with the, uh, the local population. A small bump is all it takes to throw this car about because it is insanely fast. This is the so far first and only vehicle to have hit 100 miles an hour on this course. Very difficult to do so though because uh, normally when you've accelerated it that fast you're going to bounce off a rock somewhere or a small bump and it'll just launch it into the into the foliage. You can see the car getting uh, thrown about. I actually run it in a little bit too deep on uh, that corner there and then we nose plant it over the edge of the jump and that's not particularly helpful. More trying to carry a huge amount of speed. The brakes are phenomenal. You can get this car stopped so quickly but uh, of course that does lead to me pushing it a little bit more <laughs> in an attempt just to see what it can it can do. You see how quickly we get stopped. That is a near vertical uh, <laughs> cliff face and the Ferrari will get stopped. Uh, you can see it bouncing across the bumps from side to side and uh, we almost managed to save it. It's just getting thrown about uh, nearly, nearly. Also, slight little bit of wonky collisions with Michael inside the cockpit, but there we go. No, not much uh, to, be, uh, to be done with that one. Uh, I was trying to be a little bit more cautious so that uh, I stopped having silly accidents across that jump. It, it, it didn't quite work. Uh, we get up to almost 80 miles an hour before we get down to turn one. You can go on the brakes so late. It took a little while to kind of get the hang of this vehicle because of the brutal acceleration. But that brutal acceleration wasn't necessarily helpful in some instances. Easy to spin up the wheels, easy to spin the car. You had to actually be very, very careful with this one. Unlike some of the other Formula 1 cars that I have driven down here, uh, this one was so much quicker accelerating, actually caused it a lot of problems around here. Really got to be, um, yeah, very, very, very wary of the throttle. And the bumps, it disliked the bumps immensely. So... It was a it was a tough car to drive. Certainly, to try and drive this vehicle fast down here is is very very tough. Trying to carry that uh, corner speed, you know, it will take a huge amount of corner speed. It can break incredibly late for these turns and so on. But a lot of caution, a lot of caution was uh, was required to keep it uh, all all under control and in check. And certainly with these big landings, you know, Formula One cars not exactly designed for that in mind. Incredibly low ground clearance and so on. It was, yeah, you, you've got to, be, got to be very, very wary of this vehicle. And certainly coming up towards the bumps around this uh, second to last corner, you can't get on the power too soon, otherwise you uh, will just spin around the final turn. We launch it towards the line, it's 104 miles an hour as it uh, crosses the line with a big flip and a twist and, uh, and a tumble. It is the, the fastest car, certainly, in terms of straight line speed to go down here but uh, a little bit uh, a little bit fiddly with her there is so much like a ridiculous amount of power in this you can pretty much you know drive it up an almost vertical hill it'll go just point it at wherever you want it to go and it will it will climb it because it is so absurdly fast but uh, yeah trying to get it down the narrow paths of uh, Chiliad a little bit uh, tricky with the car being uh, being bounced around and certainly a uh, a fail race worthy spectacular crash after crossing the finish line. 
An interesting challenge, most definitely, uh, driving the uh, Ferrari. A little bit of a change of pace as we go to our next vehicle, the, uh, the Ford Sierra Cosworth. Uh, yeah, I, I was um, not quite prepared for the differences in speed. I sort of spoiled myself a little bit driving that Ferrari. But it wasn't a good... I should have left the Ferrari till last. But, um, yeah, everything now feels incredibly slow uh, <laughs> compared to the way the Ferrari accelerates. The uh, Ford also doesn't have anywhere near as good at brakes as the right as you can imagine really and it doesn't actually have uh, amazing traction it is uh, a tendency to be a little bit slidey things go slightly wrong almost immediately didn't actually have an accident but i went through the bushes that killed a huge amount of the momentum stuck a wheel on a rock bounced me wide and well that's the end of the uh, sierra i could just about though get it free from the the rocks yeah, the main, the main kind of two things, really, to watch out for in this vehicle. The brakes weren't fantastic. Uh, admittedly, a large part of that may be to do with the fact that it followed a Formula One car. Uh, but certainly, trying to get it slowed down for Turn 1 was uh, interesting, to, uh, to say the least, in a couple of other places. Uh, it certainly felt like you had to uh, be quite early on the brakes. Uh, it does tumble pretty well when things do go, <laughs> do go a little bit wrong. Uh, they're not the worst brakes by far that we have seen going down here as you see i get it under control again down some uh, rather ridiculously uh, steep hills uh, a bit too much speed carried across the uh, the final jump i thought it was worth it was worth a go i hadn't quite realized how much speed i was carrying down there and sure enough once it's gone there's no bring it back i tried to get it back uh, pointing in the right direction I just wanted to spin around in, in many 360s down there eventually uh, getting it to a to a stop it wasn't a too bad of a car to drive, although getting it in trouble coming across the uh, bump there. That bump claimed, I think, more victims in this episode than we've seen uh, seen previously, especially on the Formula One car. Although that's because it's hitting it so fast, you tend not to get fired off the fired off that jump too often, unless you unless you're kind of already off the course when you hit it. So yeah, that's a, an unusual accident for the uh, Sierra. Again, not as powerful a brakes as the uh, the F1 car, but a damn sight better than the Hummer we had a couple of weeks ago. As I try to uh, slalom its way down towards the second to last corner, I just clipped it on the bumps. It was just that tiny little bit asking too much of the Sierra and uh, ended up putting it around in a circle, which is... Uh, slightly less than ideal and then as we come down <laughs> the uh, little side road again just lost the back end it was a, a fair bit uh, oversteery this vehicle which um yeah not something it was kind of oversteery it wasn't kind of the snappy oversteer that we often see it's kind of just a more gradual oversteer or with the uh, with the sierra and sure enough as it goes as it tumbles uh, it comes actually took quite a lot of damage uh, <laughs> the vehicle dented up roof and so on quite impressive damage actually on this uh, on this car it took a little while to uh, to get the sierra down as well uh, to be fair the <laughs> the differences between this and the uh, f1 car took me a couple of runs just to kind of wrap my head around back driving a normal a normal vehicle it's quite a good fun vehicle to drive though it didn't have any sort of really silly problems you just had to be aware it was a bit oversteery the traction wasn't great and it. it did like to spin up the wheels around some of these corners and the brakes were for, for kind of a, a normal road car that the brakes weren't quite as good they weren't terrible but they uh, they weren't quite as good it was a nice vehicle to uh, chuck around these turns although the hairpin i was having a little bit of trouble to uh, get the front end turned in to that one i tried all sorts of various different ways of getting it through i, I never really never really got it happily through the hairpin particularly so uh, that one was uh, going to have to do better on the bumps though than we saw from the ferrari despite the fact it did have a tendency to be a little bit oversteery, it kind of didn't flick the back of the car every time you went over a slight bump. That's always a fear with the high-end supercars that uh, they would do that kind of thing. Never really occurred with the Sierra. You see around all of these turns, even with you know there, there being plenty of bumps. You know it's a fairly rough course this one. You could uh, put the power down with relative confidence out of the out of the bumpier sections. Which was always nice. Yeah, you had to be careful. You can be an utter moron with the car, especially not around this uh, second to last corner. But on the whole, it's, uh, yeah, did a, a pretty solid job. And then we are around the final turn. It is about 60, <laughs> 68 miles an hour uh, compared to the 104 that we got from the Formula One car in that tiny little space of, uh, of acceleration. 
a fairly solid vehicle, really, for uh, for going down Chiliad. Perhaps a little unspectacular in some ways. Once you've got the, the hang of the brakes and the oversteer, once you're just a, a tad careful with the throttle... Yeah, no real, no real major problems for the Sierra. And finally, we have got the balmy TVR Sagaris. I, I do love the TV. I, I love TVRs in general. I just love the craziness that goes on <laughs> with them, and uh, especially the Sagaris. Naturally, we have it in bright purple. The exhaust spit fire out at 90 degree angles because what other angle could you possibly have an exhaust when it comes to a TBR? It, the, yeah, they're crazy cars, the Sagaris. I was looking forward to uh, chucking this one down the course. I, I was wondering how crazy we were going to have the handling for this uh, car. Turns out actually pretty nice. In, in quite a lot of ways, it was uh, easier to drive than the uh, than the Sierra. We didn't quite have the uh, manic oversteer in, in this particular one. You could, though, get yourself into trouble with the Sagaris. It was quite a quick vehicle, and carrying too much speed over the jump, we bumped the front on the rock face, and that will put you round. I lost the back end over a bump there. Managed to uh, skirt my way around some hikers. Did save the car before plummeting all the way down the side of the mountain and managed to climb back onto the course. And then I love how the hikers just paid no attention, just carried on their, <laughs> their business. It's quite like a bright purple TVR just swerved off the road at 80 in front of it. Maybe not quite 80, but uh, yeah, I love the way they just walked away. Uh, more problems. Lost the back end coming into uh, that section this time around. It was, again, asking asking too much of the car. Into the hairpin. I didn't quite get <laughs> front end turned in in the manner that I was expecting to. And when I went to boot the throttle to uh, kind of slide the car through the turn, it didn't, it didn't work. I just booted the throttle straight off the mountain. Not my best driving manoeuvre, I will be honest. The hairpin actually did throw up a couple of problems. I think I might have been catching the rear on a bush that sort of wanted to straighten the car out. I was kind of expecting it to get turned, or maybe it was just sort of the camber of the road there. I was kind of expecting it to get turned a little bit more, and it wasn't quite uh, quite working through the uh, through the hairpin. Of all the vehicles, this was probably the easiest to get a uh, clean run down, down this course. It was surprisingly kind of grippy, surprisingly manageable, really. You could get things wrong with the car, certainly, and uh, if you asked too much of it, yeah, you could you could spin the vehicle around, but uh, it wasn't quite the same uh, level as a wheel spin uh, and the lack of traction that you've got in the, in the Sierra. The brakes were better on this car. Performance was uh, pretty impressive with the kind of the acceleration straight lines. It's not going to match the Formula 1 car, no, but, you know, we're up to 75 miles an hour down that part of the course. It's only kind of 10 miles an hour down on the on the F1 car uh, in, in that sort of section, 10, 15 miles an hour. Yeah, I know it is only a very, very small section, but it could put its power down. It could use its power very, very well and didn't really have any issues with the bumps. Got a little bit caught up across the landing there, ran a tad wide. To be fair, normally if you do that with a car, you go flying off the mountain. Again, it shows just how well the TVR was managing with this course. There's a big jump as we get it fired down the uh, little side road here. Again, still perfectly manageable, still perfectly controllable as we round the second to last corner. A little bit of oversteer across the bumps as we come towards the finish line. I actually managed to run it a bit wide. We uh, do make it across the line, though, in, uh, in that one. It was, yeah, a tad... A tad out of control, but uh, it made it down, which is the the important thing. Yeah, I went to get on the throttle out of the the final turn, kind of expecting to be able to boot it and go, and we ran a, a little bit on the uh, on the wide side out of that uh, last turn. Completely caught me out. Up until there, the TVR had been very very predictable. I know that's a weird thing to say about TVRs, but uh, yeah, the Sagaris was a a really a really rather good vehicle. So. Yeah, I uh, I approve of uh, this uh, really rather crazy car. So on to the times, and it's no surprise what goes fastest of the day, the Ferrari. However, it's perhaps a little bit of a surprise with the time. I was kind of half expecting it to challenge, you know, the Formula One cars that have gone down before. I drove it around the city briefly. It's 
just ballistically fast. However, the 123.9 will put it into 26th place. It's a quick time, but it is a good 5-6 seconds down on the other Formula 1 cars. In fact, uh, yeah, I think it's about 6 seconds down on the Renault F1 car. Issue being, it's too difficult to drive, too difficult to use the power that it has. The Sagaris goes into uh, 43rd place. Uh, it uh, goes well, fractionally quicker than the uh, Volvo 945. Yeah, that Volvo has set a damn good time down here. It does beat the, uh, the Magan Trophy. It's the same time as a Lotus Exceed. It does get beaten by the Honda NSX. The Hyundai Grandia is faster than the Sagaris. Admittedly, that Hyundai is mighty quick as well. The Sagaris is not a bad car at all. Uh, really, though, still a decent, a decent time. And the uh, Sierra Cosworth is a, a fair way down the table. Uh, 133.9 puts it into 100th place. It beats the UAZ, beats the McLaren F1 Longtail, Skoda Octavia. It does get beaten by a hearse and the Lada Neva, though. The problem with the Sierra, we didn't have the traction out of the corners and the brakes weren't quite uh, quite as powerful as, as some vehicles that uh, we have seen. So that's kind of where the uh, the Sierra fell down a little bit on this uh, on this course. However, that is it for this uh, video, guys. As ever, I'll put the links to all of the mods that I've used in the description so you can download them, have a go with them yourself. But that's it from me. Thank you very much for watching, and until next time, uh, goodbye. <laughs>